There's an area, Brian, that we've been highlighting in the Western Caribbean. Only a bit uneasy because of this. It, the, the National Hurricane Center outlining this part of the Gulf of Mexico, and it's not really just a part. It's not the Bay of Campeche or uh, the Western <laughs> Gulf. It, it could basically form right. anywhere over the next week. Yeah, so this is one of those uh, difficult things because the computer forecasts are really all over the place. And we're starting out with a super big system, and it takes time for these things to consolidate. So here we are on Wednesday, and we're talking about it maybe consolidating sort of over the weekend. And we're talking about a next week uh, event if it does indeed consolidate. So there's a, a lot to happen here before we have a threat. But we might have a threat uh, very well to Florida next week. Here's the situation. Look at this big circulation here over Central America. And known as a Central American gyre, we've been talking about this, a gyre being a big rotating thing, whatever it is. Uh, and that's what we have here. And look in this gyre. Over in here, you can kind of see some turning over there. And it's loosely related to this uh, flare up of thunderstorms. There's also an upper level disturbance uh, causing that. But over here, pretty well-defined uh, disturbance there in the extreme southwestern Gulf of Mexico in the Bay of Campeche. And there are very strong winds up in here, already up to tropical storm force. And then down here, we have a tropical depression, the Pacific. It's kind of moving up in that direction. So think of it on this big area of low pressure. There are these lobes. And these lobes are areas where things are already spinning and might be involved in eventual development. So here we are today. Now let's go forward in time uh, up to, well, first of all, I wanted to mention what you were talking about, Stephen. There's that big area that the Hurricane Center is saying 40% chance of getting at least a depression in the next week, essentially the whole Gulf of Mexico. All right, so that's today. Now let's go forward in time and uh, take a look at what the computers uh, forecasts are saying. So here we are today. There's the big area of low pressure. Watch as we go forward now to Sunday. And and it's kind of messy with the land and everything, but you can see it generally moves north. We're looking at the GFS model, and there's one kind of loose center there. But look, there's kind of another one back here. So think of this as a broad area of low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico. That's according to the American GFS model. Well, the European isn't terribly different. It's got kind of an area uh, like that. So again, not very organized about in the same place there in the central Gulf. Now, the uh, the AI version of the European model is way back here, and it's a little bit different. It's been doing pretty well this hurricane season, but it's not, none of these models are great at when the system is developing. So we'll just keep that in mind. Okay, and then the Canadian keeps it way down here and kind of develops that system, that circulation we saw way down in the southwestern Gulf in the Bay of Campeche. So uh, the thing is, as you'll see, that situations or systems that are farther south are more likely to get stronger, farther north more likely not. So when we look at the future, and now we're getting into wild territory here because nothing is developed, there you see they all kind of scatter. The Canadian doesn't move too much. These kind of move in the direction of Florida, and the AI model zooms across Florida, and this is by Tuesday morning. So we're just going to keep this in mind for people in the Florida Peninsula. Unfortunately, many people along the West Coast are still dealing with a lean, but we're going to keep in mind that the models really do bring something in that direction. Now, the question is, where is that system going to be? Because look at the strong upper level winds that are forecast universally across the northern Gulf. So the farther north the system develops, the less likely it is to be very strong. If it stays down south, it might get stronger and take longer to get up to the vicinity of Florida. So a lot of uh, maybes and ifs and coulds here, but the bottom line is that this weekend we're going to watch for potential development with something perhaps threatening Florida. Maybe not too strong, but we're going to keep an open mind that would be next week. And when we look at October in general, where do the storms come from? Well, they come from the Caribbean, and they tend to track across the southern part of Florida. There are exceptions, obviously, that go up in here, Opal up in here, and uh, and so forth. But it's uh, October is a South Florida thing and a West Coast of Florida thing. So we all have to just uh, keep that in mind. This is not some kind of freaky thing that's happening there uh, 
uh, moving north. And we have two systems way up in the Atlantic. Neither of them are going to be a threat for the rest of hurricane season. This is likely to be where we're going to be uh, watching, and we have something to watch there right now. Guys? All right. Yeah, it's something that we're going to have to watch. Actually, with that um, invest out in the eastern Atlantic, National Hurricane Center is going to start issuing advice. We're just sending that out as you were speaking, Brian. Um, so that perhaps will right. be mm -hmm. where we get the next yeah. name storm.